as we saw in the previous video, there are a lot of hormones affecting your body all the time. Your body works hard to keep everything balanced inside, no matter what is happening outside your body. This is called homeostasis. Many of your hormones are controlled by negative feedback. This means the endocrine glands stop secreting hormones once a balance level is reached, just like a furnace turns off when the room is hot enough. Let's look at how the body regulates cortisol. The hypothalamus in the brain signals the pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary then releases ACTH. Remember, ACTH stimulates the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex then releases cortisol. Cortisol causes the amount of glucose in the blood to increase by causing proteins to be released and changed into glucose. Once there is the right amount of blood glucose, a signal is sent to the hypothalamus and pituitary to stop releasing ACTH. When there are two hormones which have opposite functions, your body uses both at intervals to keep you in the normal zone. Calcitonin and PTH are used to balance blood calcium levels. If there is not enough calcium in the blood, then the parathyroid gland releases PTH. PTH does its job taking calcium from bones, absorbing more calcium from food, and making sure you pee less calcium, all to increase the amount in your blood. Once it's at a normal range, PTH turns off. If there is too much calcium in the blood, your thyroid gland releases calcitonin. Calcitonin then puts calcium into your bones, stops absorbing it from food, and causes you to pee out extra calcium until your blood is at normal levels and your thyroid is told to stop releasing calcitonin. But what happens when there is an abnormal amount of hormones and your body isn't able to correct it? Well, it depends on which hormone. Let's look at some specific hormone disorders. A hormone disorder you've probably heard of is diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is where either the pancreas doesn't make enough insulin or the body doesn't respond to the insulin correctly. With low insulin, the amount of glucose in the blood increases as the cells aren't absorbing it properly. This causes fatigue and weight loss because cells aren't getting the energy they need. So the body then breaks down protein and fat, trying to give your body glucose. Confusion can be another side effect as your brain is very sensitive to changes in glucose levels. You will pee more glucose out as well since so much is in your bloodstream and this will actually make your pee sweet. Tasting urine used to be how diabetes was diagnosed. Next, let's look at an issue with hormone levels in the thyroid. Remember, one of the hormones made there is thyroxine. To make thyroxine, your body needs iodine. If you don't have enough iodine in your diet, then thyroxine cannot be made. Your body realizes there isn't enough thyroxine, so the pituitary sends thyroid-stimulating hormone out, trying to help. TSH does stimulate the thyroid, but there's still no iodine to make thyroxine. So the thyroid swells and enlarges, causing a goiter, which is painful when swallowing or breathing. Before our next disorder, here's a quick prefix lesson. There are some hormone disorders that start with hyper or hypo. Hyper means overactive, making too much hormone. Think of a hyper child being too much to handle. Hypo is underactive, producing a low amount of hormones. Hypo has an O, which is without. Now, the next disorder we'll look at is hyperparathyroidism. 
applying what we just learned, this is making too much parathormone. Because parathormone adds calcium to the blood by removing it from your bones, this disorder leads to your bones becoming brittle as too much calcium is removed. Lastly, we'll look at a hormone in the pituitary, the growth hormone. The growth hormone is very important, especially during childhood. If someone is deficient in GH during their childhood, they could develop pituitary dwarfism. But if there's an over-secretion of growth hormone, they may develop gigantism. These have just been a few disorders caused by unbalanced hormones. There are many more. But hopefully you now understand better how important hormones and their regulation are to your body.